Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day. Today I thought I'd share with you five crucial care tips when it comes to caring for your Monstera Deliciosa. Everything you need to know so your plant is healthy and lives a long, beautiful life inside your home. Now the first tip actually isn't crucial care, it's more about purchasing a Monstera. Now these things have become internet sensations, they're all over social media, and that doesn't mean you need to pay an arm and a leg for one of these things. Now I bought this guy, he's quite large, about two feet tall, at Costco for $29, which is a really great price for a Monstera. The Monstera Deliciosa is a vining plant that's native to the tropical forests of Mexico and Panama. It gets its name from the delicious edible fruit that it can bear and the monster size it can grow up to 30 feet tall with huge leaves in the wild. The second crucial care tip is all about lighting. When it comes to lighting your Monstera Deliciosa, it needs bright, indirect light. So what does indirect lighting mean exactly? What that means is you're going to want to put this plant in a south facing room, a room that gets a lot of bright light, but you're going to want to put the plant a meter or two away from the window so it's not getting so much direct sunlight. A lot of direct sunlight will actually burn the leaves, too little sunlight will stunt its growth. So by putting it a meter or two away in a room that does get a lot of light, it will get that perfect balance of bright, indirect lighting that it needs. Another thing to consider when it comes to light and your plant photosynthesizing the light that it's receiving is to make sure that you are keeping the leaves nice and clean. That can stop photosynthesis, which may stunt the growth of your Monstera. The temperature in which you want to store your Monstera. So these do best in 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. That translates to about 68 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit and these guys do like a little bit of humidity so spritzing them with a mister bottle about once a week is probably ideal. When it comes to feeding your Monstera you're going to want to change how frequently you feed it depending on the season that it's in. So you can basically split the year into two in spring and summer when it's in its growing season you're going to want to feed this guy probably every two weeks and when it's the non-growing season, in the winter and the fall, you're probably gonna wanna feed it just once monthly. When it comes to watering a Monstera, you're gonna wanna make sure that you are not overwatering this plant. So the first thing to think about is making sure that it's in a well-drained pot and that moisture really isn't staying in that soil for too long. Now the ideal watering conditions for a Monstera are that the soil is very, very slightly moist. So what you can do is you can use your finger and put it in sort of the surface of the soil and once that's dry, that gives you an indication that it's a good time to water your plant. Now another crucial care tip is using a moss pole for your Monstera. So Monstera deliciosas have what you call aerial roots. These are roots that sprout out above the soil. By providing a moss pool, you're basically providing a home for these aerial roots and you're allowing your plant to grow to higher lengths. These plants can grow indoors in your home anywhere from 8 to 10 feet tall. So as you can see, I have not yet installed my moss pool on my Monstera, so let's do that together now. So when it comes to installing your moss pool, uh, for your Monstera, there are a couple of tools that you're going to need to get started. So you obviously need to get a moss pool itself. I bought mine on Amazon and I will gladly share uh, a link in my description. The second thing you're going to need is something to attach the Monstera to the moss pool. I've opted here for some Velcro tape and this is something that you can also buy on Amazon and I'll throw this in the description as well. So. There are a few different types of moss poles. Um, these ones that I've uh, chosen here have a solid wood dowel in them. There is a different style of moss pole that has metal prongs instead of a dowel. So when you are using the dowel variant, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not um, you know, destroying the roots of the plant. You're gonna wanna install this close to um, some of the aerial roots that are popping up. So gently, yet firmly press this in. Uh, like so, there we go, and the one thing I really um, like about this moss pole is that 
it gives you the option to just keep stacking them higher and higher um, quite easily. So this is the second one I'm going to put in here into this original one. And see how easy that is? It's super simple. Um, and I don't even think I need to install a third one just yet. This is looking quite good. So I want to get some of these you know, connected to this moss pool so they start to grow up. And I'm going to do that using this Velcro tape. So I'm going to cut off appropriate length. And I'm just going to get this guy right here. And I might even cut too long of a piece, but this should work okay. The nice thing about using this Velcro tape is that you're really not going to be damaging uh, your plant. Sometimes uh, you can see online that you can buy some metal prongs and I was just a little bit worried about using those. I think this is a lot more secure and a lot friendlier for the plant. Um, Alright, let's see here what else we can attach. So maybe we can try to attach this big guy over here to the top part of the pole as well. Alright. Now you're not going to need to do every single, you know, piece of plant that's coming out, but as long as you're kind of guiding, um, you know, your main stems so that it's going to start to grow in an upward fashion, and not before long, um, once I need to, I will install that third uh, moss pole at the top. Well, there you have it. Hopefully these crucial tips were useful for you and your Monstera. Until the next one.